I was born here at Array and lived here all my life. Uh, this is a group of people who have lived here, gone to school here, or whatever, and uh, we've been meeting every year for the last four or five years, and <coughs> that's all I know. And what we're going to do on this is, I'll scoot over here, so I'll, can I sit right here, will that work? Yes. Hi, I'm Sherry Fletcher, and this is part of the centennial celebration for the state of New Mexico's 100th anniversary. We're in the southern part of Sierra County today in the church, Jackie. It is the, it's a community center. Array Community Church. It's the Array Community Church, and we are going to interview longtime residents or past residents that come back and uh, partake in the religious uh, activities of, of this lovely sanctuary. And so we're going to start questioning with having people introduce themselves and um, give us their, where they uh, lived and where they attended school and some of their memories of Array Elementary. And so Jackie, we'll start with you. <laughs> okay, uh, I was born just down the road here, half half a mile. Uh, lived here all my life. I went to a Ray school, the first grade through the eighth grade. Then I rode the bus to Tier C and graduated from Tier C. And what year did you graduate, Jackie? Sherry. <laughs> 1956. Okay, not okay. Very good. So, uh, any memories that you have of? of that when your great uh, memories of a race school or the population of the students there how many st students were in school if you remember in the whole school I don't remember but uh, in the class that I graduated with there was eight of us and uh, one of the things that always I always think about is the snow one day it snowed mm -hmm. in Sierra County and the bus didn't run Oh. So, that was quite an experience. We got to stay home from school. <laughs> How many days of school did you go back in those times? Wow, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Were there a lot of kids let out for seasonal planning? I mean, was the community still as rural as it is now? Pretty much. Pretty much. How many grocery stores did you have? Just mm -hmm. the one. Just the one. And what was the name of it? No, we had two. The Lara's Post Office and uh, the Array store webs and then uh, Haddock's had that first. Had it first yeah. Hi Bill. <laughs> hey Bill, join yes. us. Oh, oh, this over here. Yeah. Over here. Yes. This, this, is right. this is school. This yeah. is school. This is school. Yeah. You've got an assigned seat. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and I've been neighbors all through school. <laughs> he still has a place right next to mine, right up here. Bill, what did Jackie do in school? Was she learning anything? <laughs> I went for the fun of it. <laughs> well, she she put a scar on the top of my head and one right here. <laughs> Was she throwing rocks? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. For no rocks. reason. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bill didn't do anything. No, never. He run across the top of my dad's corn shocks, and uh, when we get when we we're out gathering eggs, why he'd spear us with those corn stalks. <laughs> you don't remember that part, huh? No. <laughs> and your and the lady next to you, Marion Wright, and oh, Marion Jones Wright. And it was in, uh, I think it was about 19, in the 30s, 33 when we moved up here. In May of 1933. So well, that was right during the Depression or the Dust Bowl? Very much the Depression. And what do you remember about that and why did your family relocate? Well, we were living in Las Cruces at the time. I, I was born in Iowa and uh, they migrated up the river, I call it up the Rio Grande. And, uh, we, we had to move up here because my, bro, my, my father's brother had, we lived on his uh, property in Las Cruces and he wanted to move in there so we just had to move. And I, can't, I don't remember <coughs> the, 
why we came up this far, but we lived here uh, till uh, 1937, and I graduated from uh, grade school. And, and Ray, that old, and uh, then uh, Mama had, uh, my mother had uh, moved to Hot Springs, and we eventually, the whole family moved after I graduated, and I went into high school up there. In, Graduated from high school in 1941 from Truth Consequence, or Hot Springs. Now, do you remember uh, the any memories of the old high school that you attended there that at Hot Springs? Well, it was on North on Fourth Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we our class in 1941 we graduated. Mm -hmm. It was the first class that uh, uh, graduated from that new auditorium that they built. Uh -huh. and that's how I remember that. And that was the auditorium that was to the west yes, of right. where the the first high school was, which yes. was built in the, the old high school on Fourth Street. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the meal side. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then I worked for the telephone company there for two or three years while I was in high school, yeah, four to ten or something like that. <laughs> Do you remember Annette Smith? Yes, I do. Very much. Annette worked at the telephone company as well. Did yeah, she? that's in the early days. Yeah, uh -huh. and she had the uh, uh, she and her husband had that parts house, and my husband worked there for them for a while. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever take the baths? I took one or two. I thought I was going to faint before I got out. <laughs> <laughs> Water was pretty warm. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Do you remember the bathhouse? It was down below Broadway there. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know the name of it, but I see it every once in a while. So it's still there? Yeah. yeah. Well, and the old, the old Dell Apartments used to be the old Dell Apartments. Uh -huh. yeah, my mother worked there. As a, yeah, she did for a while. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all that. Good memories. Yeah. Good and bad, I guess I'd put it like that. <laughs> Bill, we'll start with you next. Oh. What? We'll start with, you're next. Oh, I'm next? Yeah, you can introduce yourself and talk about your attendance. I'm Bill Jones, and I was born in Hot Springs. And uh, folks were living at Array at the time, and I, we lived all over the place here. We lived just below Array. We lived two houses over here at what used to be a store building. But uh, we started out at the Plume Farm, and then at Jimmy Mendez's place, and back to Array, and then finally over here across the Jackie's Field, and stayed there until uh, we got out of high school and, and left. But uh, there's a, <laughs> a lot of things have changed. In what way? Well, I can't find my old grade school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they tore it all down and built a new one. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, uh, do you know how the adobe was compromised at the Array School? Because I'm sure that well, main building, which was the building that was WPA project, was probably where most of you, if you attended school here, went. Is that the old um, old building? The old old building. It's still building. there. They moved it. Yeah, it's no, in the no. center, and the old one is still there. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, what they had done with, uh, I don't know how many of you remember Carlos Salas, who was the who was the custodian there. Carlos always loved to water the trees. And what he did, and the, and the bushes that were on the north side of the adobe building that was the original part of the school. Because in the 70s, there was an, a, there was an extension added on. In the 80s, when I was principal there, there was an extension added on. And then, of course, then they did some minor remodeling. But the fact that the adobe was crumbling because it had been compromised with the water. The decision was made very unfortunately. You're talking about the school up there by the highway. Yeah, the array school. I'm talking about the old. Place. Was the part with the cellar still there? Uh, no, that was the part that was demolished. Oh, okay. That had the cellar, yes. That's right. Uh -huh. so. What's left? Was it Dawson's room? <laughs> I don't think that's left. None of those. Mrs. Gonzalez's room, all of those rooms that were there. I that, think they demolished all of that. They demolished all of that. That's right. They weren't supposedly left. They just replaced them. My first step, my step, my first step. Well, Sierra Gonzalez was the one that took care of the 
But Carlos did. Carlos did, that's right. He was the one that loved the trees and he watered the trees to the point that, you know, unfortunately, once adobe is wet, then it can't be salvaged. So, that's right. yeah. so next. Uh, my family moved here in 1937. We lived in several locations. I think some of the happiest times were when we were riding the school bus to TRC or Hot Springs it was then. Uh, we were all good friends. We were all poor. We didn't know it because we were all the same. And uh, Jimmy Cameron, who was Mrs. Grahava's nephew that she was raising, he and his sister Loretta, he took his guitar on the bus all the time and he would sing and entertain us. Mm -hmm. And Preston Nation, he was real quiet. I think he thought we were all kind of crazy. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. And uh, so we're on the bus to Tier Hot Springs for three and a half years. I didn't go the first three months of the year. And um, my husband and I were married here in 1942. And I followed him around in the Army. We came back to the valley because we both loved it here, and eventually moved to Lock Farm in Las Cruces. And I'm now in a real estate company in Las Cruces. And you are Jerry? I'm Geraldine George, and now I'm Jerry Sells. Very good. Thank you. Next. I don't have anything to say. I've never done anything. <laughs> <laughs> he was mean. Oh. I'm oh. Boyd Wells. I think I was born on the other side of the river uh, from Ray and uh, was raised around here. And I like to eat, so I went to cruise where I could make a little money. It didn't work <laughs> out, but <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it, I guess. What do you remember about the roads? When did they start paving the roads? And, and The roads was paved all the time. We didn't have a freeway, mm -hmm. but the old 85 has been in a long time. It was done. they started paving it in 1937 when we moved here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And up in the wow. it was it was dirt roads. And if you recall, that the first road was across on the back side of the mountains over there, close to where the oh. Camino Real is, yeah, on the back side. Where Upham is, that it continued to go straight that way before they ever started building the pay old Highway 85 in this area. I have something on that. I have something on that part. Um, I am uh, uh, David Cantrell. My husband is the pastor of this church. Uh, I found something out. She was talking about the, the roads being paved and everything. My father, my, my husband's grandfather, is the one that used his, his mule te uh, team to do those roads. Wow. And his name was Floyd Snowder. And I just found this out this, this last Sunday. Uh, that he actually uh, is uh, the reason why they have those the, the back roads is he used his team to do that. Plus, he's the one that put the first dam in for the Cavallo Lake with his team of mules. So uh, that that is something that uh, is very neat to know know about this area. His name was Floyd Snowder, and uh, he also did the roads from here to Hatch and to Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. And he did that with the mules, his mule team. And he had some type of a blade that he used all the way through. <laughs> so I did want to share that part. I do know something on that part. And since you mentioned it, I thought that that needed to come out. That's great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other comments, Mr. Mr. Boyd? No, I got out of school in 1958. At Hot Springs, or Hot, Springs. Hot Springs. And we rode the school bus. But Mr. Cartner was the driver. And once in a while he'd have Mr. Burks wait before us up there time he got to school. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember LaVon Tibbs? Yep. LaVon and I were in the same class together. Is that right? Yeah, her and, and Patsy Norville used to have quite some cat fights on the back of the bus. Oh, yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I mean, they really, they really had, they, they really, now they, they were good friends later in life, but at that time they were both, Pat, uh, 
Jeez. Yvonne was in my class, and then Patsy was, I think, a little bit younger. But boy, they <laughs> they could scrap a little. Good. They could scrap a little bit. That's right. That's was there any distance between, like, uh, did you feel like you weren't part of Hot Springs High School because you were coming from a different community? Or was there, I know the array kids today sometimes kind of tend to yes. stay to themselves. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that back then? Jackie's well, shaking. But you know, everybody likes some excuse for what, yes. blame somebody else for something. If they felt out of place, that's tough, mm -hmm. you know. They uh, called us the river rats. Yeah, they did that. Mm -hmm. Did they really? Yeah. Yes, sure did. Yes. Not to your face, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. My mother went to school with this lady right here. <laughs> and your mother's name? Was Wilma Bell. Wilma Bell. She was beautiful. <laughs> and May, her sister, was went to school with him. On the side. But, uh, so when you went to school, you know, what was, did you see, today there's a lot of Hispanics in our area. Was the ratio still fairly high when you were in school? Yes. It was higher. Hispanics higher? Than yes. Wow. Did you feel like the language issue had any p impact on your education or their indicate in education? Had, it, had impact on theirs. Some of them started school and couldn't talk English, so they had a very hard time for the first couple of grades. Yes. But I think that was good in a way because they learned. Now they have... Now they don't never have right. to learn completely, you know what I mean? It's, right. it's, it's uh, everybody needs to talk Spanish, you know, that, that's fact. But if you're going to do business in, in here, you need to have a good command of the English language. I think it hindered some of them. Yes. Did you go to movies in Hot Springs? I think I went to two movies in my life, hardly okay. one. Okay. The movies cost money, maybe. Yeah. Yes. You know, you know, in the high school, you had to speak English on the grounds. You couldn't speak Spanish. I right. remember that. Is that on every Yeah. When I started from, from the school here and then up there, it was strange for me because I didn't know anyone hardly. And I walked up the steps on the west side and I asked somebody there, where do I go from here? And he looked at me and said, I don't care where you go. So well, that was my initiation to go into high school in months break. But we survived, didn't we? Yeah, we did, eventually. Okay, next. She didn't go to school here. She's, no. She lucked out. I'm a foreigner. You're a foreigner. Where are you from? <laughs> I was raised in Farmington, New Mexico. Oh, Lord, you are for you are for You're a <laughs> No doubt about it. Big time. Who owns that little blue Ford out there? Kathy just ran into it. Oh! As long as she's got her chair. Sure, sure. Sorry, sorry about that. That just <laughs> broke my heart. Okay. You're next, sir. Celso. Okay. <laughs> my name is Celso de Como, born. 1928 at Array. My, uh, my dad is still asking for $25 for Dr. White when he, I was born. That's what he charged. And went to school at Array, the school that was still there. And then I went to school in Oakland during the war, and work and co op. I went to school at night. And then uh, before that, I used to sell a grid paper to her dad when they lived over here at the school, school section in the uh, Los Angeles Examiner, you know, on horseback. I used to. Oh, wow. wow. And what year was that? Uh, oh, they lived over here, uh, I guess, 39, 40, something like that. So horseback was still a mode of travel yeah. at that point in time. To, and they used to give me the paper for the church, you know, to take it to different people, uh -huh. you know, the news or whatever How it was. Neat. And then I went to, I came back from Oakland and I uh, joined the Marine Corps. I did 46 and I discharged 47. And um, then I started working for Prices Black over here. And um, I found out that he was paying Marcel Fritz 55 cents an hour, and he was paying me 50 cents an hour. Ooh. So I quit and went to work as a miner. Uh, <laughs> Santa Rita. Santa Rita. 
salary at nine dollars and fifty cents a day, which is <laughs> almost as much, half as much. And then after the mine, I uh, we rent a store in Dell City, Texas, for a few months. I didn't like it. I didn't get along with the boss. And then I came back and went to work at uh, back to the mines, underground mines. And then I. Uh, they closed the mines down, yes. the ore went down, the price of ore, mm -hmm. and they put me on the open pit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like it, so I went to White Sands and got a job there. And I retired there with 33 years as an electronic technician. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in 1951, I met uh, my sweetie here. <laughs> And we've been married for over 60 years. That's wonderful. And, and your wife, was she from Array? No, she's from, from Derry. Derry. From Derry. 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 All right. And if, uh, the if, uh, um, if the uncle would be alive today, the they would put me in jail for the things Sorry. that we did. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so muddy. And your, and your uncle's name was? Which Dwayne? one? <laughs> the, one that, the one that, that uh, I guess... Uh, Would put Celso in jail. Well, yeah, the young <laughs> one. TK. Oh, oh, TK. TK was the youngest one. There was, yeah. Dad had five brothers one sister. Uh -huh. And Jackie's mother was it's Dad's sister. sister. <laughs> and Dad then five brothers. So that was a Robinson then? No. Yeah. No. 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 Welch. 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 Yeah. And she married a Robinson. She married a okay. Robinson. I guess that's about the size of it. I retired in 1985 and we spent six weeks in Europe vacationing. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, and then I uh, bought the nation's place over here and I got some pecan trees there. Do you know how the Array community, what the name of Array was before it was named Array? It was. El Bonito. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, any understanding of why the name changed? Well, our, our Mr. Array put the first post office there, mm -hmm. and that's when he changed it. Oh. Urbano Array. Mm -hmm. I don't think he just had four. He was the postman. And uh, then uh, I think the Lundells or something, buddy, changed it over to it. She had a picture of the, the post office. Right, and we're going we're gonna to yeah. put that post picture that post office in this interview, so to see what it was like at that and time. And my dad built that house there, array there in 1922, when he came back from the war, well, First World War. Uh -huh. And the road used to go right in front of the Catholic Church. There was, there was no, 85 wasn't, wasn't That's there right. yet. That's exactly right. Yeah. So the house was facing in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the Candelaria took over the post office, uh -huh. Raquel Candelaria. Uh -huh. And from there on, uh, even Preston had it for a while. Uh -huh. Henry Lara. Mm -hmm. yeah. Preston. Now, do you remember where Fort Thorne was? I know that's closer to going down the valley, uh, further toward Doniana. It's right there where the two the two county bar was. You all probably all know where the two okay, county. Okay, it's it's on the other yeah, side right. of the river. Right, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, just a little further up the county line, on that uh, nice little place there. That it's pretty well. And it was now. It's I think it's now. It's under farm ground, farmland, isn't it? It's all been. Uh, I think over. they uh, graze cattle there. Oh, do they? Yeah. That uh, in in the early documentation of the territory of New Mexico, that was the sickliest. Fort in New Mexico. Oh, really? It was Fort Thorne, and it was because of the malaria. Oh, wow. Because oh. the malaria there was so close to the river, and it was lowland, that oh, uh, that gracious. was identified uh, in the early military archives as the sickliest fort in New Mexico. Oh, wow. And so they eventually moved it to higher ground, and I think when they closed that, then they went on and you know, and regrouped and, and uh, uh, focused on Fort Selden, because Fort Selden was higher than mm -hmm. Fort Thorne was. So. You know, Elaine uh, Black Houston wrote something about Array, you know, maybe four or five pages, and I think I have a copy of it. 
Well, if, if you could bring a copy of that, or uh, maybe Jackie, and then I will scan it in, and then, or I mean, or I can come to your house. However, it would be nice to have that information. Uh, I'm sure that many of you probably remember Mrs. Gonzalez, Vidal Gonzalez. She had done a lot of research on the array, and Santiago, her husband, was from uh, the Garfield area, I believe. And so there was a lot of research done that I've been fortunate enough to have copies of from one of her daughters, the daughter of uh, out in California, so, mm -hmm. so, and Mrs. Bencomo? I'm Celia Bencomo. I was born in, in uh, Derry, New Mexico, and I went to school at, at uh, Hot Springs <laughs> for my first year, and I, and I switched to, to Hatch, because I went to here because my brother was going to, to Hot Springs, so, mm -hmm. but I, it was too far for me to walk by myself, from, from where we lived to, to catch the bus, so I switched to the following year. Uh -huh. Continue my studies over there, uh -huh. and then I, I finished my schooling, and I stayed at the farm with my parents to help out because my, they were getting an elder to handle. So mm -hmm. I, I never worked out at my home, but uh, I, I helped take care of my parents and my brothers and all that. And my, my grandfather named Derry. He was on the name. Oh, he homesteaded. Oh, he was. Yes, my, my grandfather Lucini, uh, Benito Lucini. And the Lucinis were the ones that also owned the where the, the dairy school was. The yes. Lucinis owned all of that my, property my and gave it. Your grandfather gave the property. Yeah. And he was a veteran of the Civil War. <laughs> really? Yes. In the New Mexico in the New Mexico uh, discharge of volunteers. He, he, he served seven years in the, in the, in the Union, service. Union Army. Did he fight in Valverde? I think so. Yeah. He was discharged in Fort Union, uh, New Mexico. So he was way up north then, yeah. wasn't he? So he probably battled the whole way up the trail? And he came back and married my, my grandma in, in Cruces, Las Cruces. And then he um, kept homesteading. He, he homesteaded in Hatch. My mother was born in Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were seven girls and three boys, ten, ten children. Mm -hmm. and, and then he kept on homesteading, he homesteaded near this one. We were, I was born in the house that he built. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's mm -hmm. Is the house still standing? No, just part of it, just, just about one, one, two rooms that they, they built next to, to that one. Now, when you, went, when you went to high school in Hatch, do you remember the movie theater down there? That had to have been, what, the 40s? It was in the 40s, yeah. Do you remember the movie theater in Hatch? Bohannon's yeah, the one. Bohannon's the one. And there was another one. Yes. And they had to there drive were, in. The mission. The mission. <laughs> they had a drive in in Hatch yeah. along yeah, for with. For a little while they had to drive in, yeah. Along with. Mm -hmm. so, uh, when we interviewed Sunny Hale, Emory Hale from Hillsboro, and I think Honey, um, Sunny's mother was a Faulkner, right? right. Uh, he talked about his first job was working at the movie theater in Hatch. Uh, working the machine for the movies. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. the projector. He was a projectorist. Mm -hmm. And that really surprised us because Sonny has always been one that has worked on heavy equipment and mind and all this. And when he said that he had worked as a projectionist, a couple of us about fell out of our seat because we didn't we didn't think Sonny would have done something like that. So the interviews were full of surprises. My name is Randy Collins. And what I know about Ray is there was a little gal that used, that used to live there that uh, I met in high school. And uh, her name was Kathy Tibbs. Was it Tibbs? Tibbs. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I became very familiar with Brass Black Farms, um, especially all the back roads. <laughs> Both in and out. Uh, well, I won't tell you about that. <laughs> but uh, from that point on, why we got? Well, of course, we got married after after a while. And, uh, Dale used to take me on little excursions around. Uh, around the farm and tell me tell me stories about it. Of 
course, I slept through most of them, but <laughs> he didn't know that. Uh, but that was that was really uh, that was really interesting. He, he knew a lot about the about the history of the of the country. And of course, I, I don't know how many how many years he spent in in this area, but gosh, uh, quite a number. Now, of course, the whole after they came here from Oklahoma, like the whole family uh, pretty much settled in in the valley. It was. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty interesting experience. And then, of course, we, we also took the opportunity to, as we were driving around, to uh, take a shotgun or a rifle or something with us and, and uh, fill the freezer with <laughs> both in and out. <coughs> oh, well, Dale was... Uh, was the farm woman for Price Black Deer. And uh, for me it was just it was it was pretty enjoyable time. We, just, we spent a lot of a lot of time together and just just talked and uh, gosh I wish well, I wish I could remember all the stories and told but, but do you remember? Do you remember any of the of the stories about any of the mining that happened in the Doniana Mountains over on the other side, like the gold or the silver, or any kind of limited like dry pan, dry dust panning that was happening in that area? Not much. Uh, Preston Caudill used to used to talk about uh, some of the mining, and uh, but I don't I don't really remember. A lot of stories that he told Someone's going to be here pretty soon, though, named Ronald McGuire, and he is a big storyteller, and he he Don't has gathered that. he's <laughs> gathered lots of information in this area. So uh, when he gets here, he'll be able to share a lot with you about that. Uh, he here? he no lived more. right over here at this house yeah. next door, and grew up there. And uh, anyway. Uh, he, I wish my daddy was still alive. The man he's talking Don't about. Don't we all wish our daddies Dale, were still Dale alive? Tibbs. So if you had something that you'd want to tell the future generations, what would it be about losing their history? Write down what your parents tell you or your grandparents yes. tell you. And don't think they're going to live forever. That's right. Yeah. When they're gone, then you're saying, why didn't I write this down? If I'd known you were doing this today, my daddy did write down some things. And uh, but daddy moved here when he was uh, around 12 years old. Uh, Dale Tibbs, with his uh, parents Winnie and Joseph Tibbs, and they lived right over where all the Welches lived, where Boyd Lee Welch lived, and and uh, Gloria Welch that you'll be interviewing pretty soon, and uh, Anita. And uh, I was born in Hatch, uh, in my grandparents' home on a farm, and their name was Provine, Ed and Annie Provine. And so our history goes way, way back. I was born in 1944, and uh, my grandfather uh, eventually moved to Socorro when I was around five years old, and was the first farmer to grow cotton in Socorro. Wow. And they had to put in a gin just for him. Is. is that the big gin that's in downtown yes. Socorro? How yes. Neat. Yes. He had to put in. So, uh, anyway, we have a lot of history. My daddy was the farm foreman for Price Black Farm. He started working there when he was 13. And so he worked there till the day he retired when he was 65. And he came to these reunions until he passed away in uh, 2009. Excellent. And I went to school at Array. Went to school at Array till I had to go to Hot Springs in the eighth grade. Wow. How many of you remember when Array School went to ninth grade? Because there was a time when it was up to the ninth grade. I got something to tell them. The uh, old schoolhouse down there was the eighth, ninth, and tenth. They only had three grades there. And then the, the other school where I went. <laughs> was that up in Array? Yeah. 
So they had they had eight, nine, and ten, ten down here where the the old, the old school house. The old school house. And that was the used to be the restaurant about ten or twelve years ago, right on the two county line. No. Or is no. that the one no. that's been torn no. down? No. 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 Different area. Yeah. Old oh, county line down this way. That's that way. Okay. I'm going. I'm going. You got next up. Okay. So there was one schoolhouse in a, in Derry, right? Mm -hmm. That went. It was three years. No. It was. It was just like a ray. When they, the array they, when was they, uh, wrote a, a history of the array. That's something you should get. The Ray boys live on the first house on the left going up that way. Uh -huh. This side of me. How many kids were in that eighth, ninth, and grade or eighth, ninth and or what did you say, the eighth, ninth, and tenth? Eighth, year? ninth, and tenth. So how the, many the boys? The race grew up to the seventh, through the seventh grade. Okay. So how many boys were in the eighth, ninth, and tenth grades? <laughs> was there a handful or was it twenty? Oh, well, there's quite a few, I guess. Yeah. So twenty or less? Or twenty or more? More, I think. More. I never went there. <laughs> That's interesting. But anyway, the Array boys wrote the history of right? Mm -hmm. Told about their father, the grandfather, or whatever, named the store, mm -hmm. the town. And we are going to interview, uh, Jack has already set it up to interview Larry, so we are going to interview one of the descendants from the Red I, I got the book ready, and uh, maybe I'm out of line here. No, not at all. Well, anyway, they had the uh, the bus drivers, you know, that started from back when they used to go to the old mill site and, mm -hmm. you know, old, old Wawa Jones and all them bus drivers. But uh, my dad never drove a bus car to their book. See, dad drove an old Model A truck for a school bus. And... Every day he had to put, he put a pan under the pan of the thing to catch the oil when it dripped out. And when it finished the route, he poured it back in the motor. <laughs> and then when they come out with, uh, in 36, they had to have a steel top on the bus. And Candelary underbid that. And he got the <coughs> And what was your bus. father's name? Huh? What was your father's name? Jack Deal. And what is your name, sir? I'm Jim Deal. Jim Deal, all right. Jim and Jack. See, we, we homesteaded Dusty, or Daddy did, in uh, 29. And then we moved up there from Abilene, Texas. And then uh, us kids got big enough to go to school. Why, we moved down here on the highway. Got a model road there on the corner. Did you ever go to the Dusty School? Yeah. You went with the Hendersons? Uh, Henderson, no. Uh, the one that had the store. What was their name? Goble. Huh? Goble. Oh, Goble. Goble had the, the store there. Yeah. It, it does be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that long time. Pretty near forgot about that. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Deal. Yes. We'll, let, we'll go back up here to the front with the lady here. Introduce yourself and. Tell us about your history with the connection with Ray. Well, I'm Edna Tibbs. I was Dale's wife. And, uh, Were you Levon's mother? Yes. You? And you're Levon's sister? Yes. Boy, you sure look like I looked at you and I thought, you smiled just like Levon. <laughs> well, thank you. Who are you? Sherry Fletcher. Mm -hmm. I was I was in the same class with Levon. Oh, my goodness. Had beautiful red hair. Yes. She was quite a, quite a character. She was always fun-loving. Yes, she was. Well, what well, do you remember? Daddy, what year did you marry Daddy? Oh, I can't remember what year. 1943. <laughs> January of 1943, she married Dale Tibbs. Wow. What did he but do we for a living? married 66 years. He and he was, away. was he the Price Dairy Farmer? He, he was, was uh, working at the dairy then. And do you remember what he brought home a week? What he brought home? Yeah. Money-wise. What was his salary? <laughs> oh. Daddy could, t could have told you everything. He yeah. still had the sharpest mind when he, he died. Did. He never could you make anything. a living? Could you make a living with it? Was it considered a good living in those times? Uh huh. That's good. Yeah. Daddy did everything you could think of on the farm. Uh -huh. He was a milker when he married you, wasn't he? I think I. I don't know if he was a milker, but he worked right there at the dairy doing things and. 
and he was he was there for so we, we lived right there at the dairy for a few years and then they made him they wanted him to be the farm managers so he moved we moved down on the lower farm on the lower farm did you work outside the home or no you were a housewife so you really worked <laughs> but there is an interesting part to that for a couple of years she weighed cotton uh, Daddy raised cotton for some years, and and she weighed the cotton for for the braceros that picked the cotton. I forgot about that. And Lavonna and I had a lot of fun playing in the trailer of cotton. Oh, I bet. Because we'd go down there. Just called packing it down. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it down. Yeah. yeah. Jumping on top of it, right? <laughs> we couldn't keep him out of it. <laughs> and Daddy used to feed the quail. On the lower farm, uh -huh. he would drive around. Lavon and I would sit on the tailgate, and he would throw feed out to the to the quail. Get them fat enough to shoot. Get them fat enough yeah. for Mr. Black, Black and Mr. Price to, uh, to hunt them, and of course later Randy and my daddy too. Oh, we had a wonderful life on yes. the farm. Good life, I hope sure did. Good memories. But he was in his early twenties. Early twenties. Twenty-one. Wow, that was quite an achievement. Yes. Quite an achievement at his Very age. Very much so. Yeah. Special man. He'll be honored by this. All right, we'll go to the next row here. Who are we starting with? Dorothy. My name is Dorothy Nations, and I've lived here for 60 years. And I married Preston Nations. And uh, of course, we were farmers. We had one son named John. And uh, what else? What did you farm? What was the main crop? Cotton? Cotton and alfalfa. Did you have to worry about the water like you do now? No. No. Plenty of water. Mm -hmm. Do you think the climate has changed over? Yeah. Do you think we're losing our farmers? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. My husband, he was a postmaster for 16 years here in the rain. So. Do you remember his pay scale? No. No? Was it a good living? What is it considered oh, yeah. a good job? Yeah, it's a good job. Mm -hmm. Did he ever come home and tell you any stories? Oh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember something that was really stands out in your mind? No. Did he come home for lunch? Did you shut the post office no, down? I took, I took a hot lunch to him. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's good. What were his hours? From uh, 8 to 5. That is and he right. didn't close at noon, like they do now. Yeah. Good for him. Dorothy grew up on Mounds Creek. Yeah, I was raised on Oh, Mounds really? Creek. Born in Tears, at Hot Springs, and then raised on Mounds Creek. Did you ever take any of the baths? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy them? Mm -hmm. uh, us kids used to love to go and play in that pool, you know, they had that pool. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, that's what we liked to go and play in that pool. When you took a bath, I did, when, you, when you did the mineral baths, um, Annette Smith talked about how you could take a bath, but you could also then take a bath with a bar of soap. But you couldn't take a bar of soap into the hot bath. <laughs> so she said it really wasn't a bath because there was no soap. It was just a plain thing for us. It was a soap, and the soap didn't have soap. I mean, so it's things, I think some things we don't think about today, but. But probably when you were poor, that may have been your only bath, so they probably were hoping. No, no. My dad, he was a rancher. John Gordon, that's John. his name. Oh, the Gordons. And, okay. Uh, we had a real good life. Yeah. Real good, hard life. And you still have descendants in the area. The Gordons are still up in the. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Palomas? No. Manamas. Of course, Charlotte is in the 
that married Willard mm -hmm. and Jordy. Yeah. How many remember Clyde Gall? They had his funeral yesterday. Do you remember him? He was, he was my brother-in-law. He was. <laughs> wow. Small world. So, do you have a nickname? Yeah. Are you? Baby. Baby, yes. Up there, there are not down here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm up there, but not down all those here. Girls, all those Gordon girls had nicknames. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Doggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was up the animals. Babe, yeah, that's Faith there. Yeah, yeah. Babe and Doggy. Isn't yeah. that fascinating? Cedar and Faith. Uh -huh. Faith didn't really have a nickname. She didn't have a <coughs> used to call her Fat Lady because she was so fat. I <laughs> 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 changed. <laughs> oh, man. Lord, what the nickname, huh? <laughs> oh, well, that's wonderful, wonderful. All right, we'll go to our next. Okay, my name is Ruby Hill. I was born in Buffalo Cap, Texas in 1930. And I don't know how long did we live down there before we moved back, moved to New Mexico. But anyway, I went to school at Array. And when I graduated from Array School, then I went to school at TRC. I graduated in 1949 there. So, and we bought a, we lived in Alma Gorda. And I had married Donald Hill, and we lived in Alma Gordo. And then from there, we decided to move up to Chula Rosa, and then we heard about some farmland over here at Array, so we bought that and moved over here. So, Do you remember how much you paid for it? No, actually I don't. Did he think he was just <clears throat> paying a lot, or did he feel like he got a good deal on it? No, he, he thought it was fair. It, it, he said he always wanted to grow some alfalfa, and he never had any place to, to grow it. So he said, "Now I can grow all I want." How many how many acres of alfalfa did he grow? Uh, Nineteen. And how many how many cuttings did he get a year? Five, I think. Five. I don't know if That's that was true every year, but mm -hmm. at the beginning, I remember it was that we got five cuttings. I think on a good year they'd get seven. Maybe on a real good year, if you didn't have, if you had a late, if you had an early, you didn't have any more late freezes, and then you had a, and you had a long fall, you could get seven cuttings. So, but the, the weather had to play with, be very nice at that time to get that many cuttings. I don't, I don't remember getting that many. If we did, I don't remember. That's that. not right. You got five and maybe a and that's yeah, five and all. Yeah, five and a half. That, mm -hmm. Here. Okay, I was thinking about down down uh, close to Doniana and down in town. They get the same too. They, they get, get the same. Seven cuttings, 